there and welcome to the February edition of Let's Talk Astronomy. Today we'll be looking at one of the essentials for telescope owners. We'll be looking at eyepieces. We'll be talking with Ian Littlewood, our sponsor here at Rother Valley Optics, who will explain what eyepieces are for, how they work, and which one might be best for you to see a particular object. But before we meet Ian, there's a couple of things that we might look at in the night sky towards the end of February and into March. Everybody will have noticed, even a casual observer will have noticed, the bright planet Jupiter, brighter than any star, and it's been in the sky for the last few months. And you may have noticed that over the last few weeks, another planet's coming to join it. That planet is Venus. Venus looks even brighter than Jupiter because, of course, it's closer, Jupiter much further away. But during the end of February, going into March, the two planets will get closer and closer together in the sky. And that's going to be a great sight to watch. You don't need a telescope, you don't need binoculars, you can just watch it happen just after sunset. So Venus and Jupiter coming closer together in our sky. There's one particular night which might be really good for anybody who just wants to take a photograph of this pairing of planets. Because on the 26th of February, just after sunset, the crescent moon will join the planetary pair. And in fact, this beautiful crescent moon will lie between the two planets. So get your cameras out, take an exposure of a few seconds, keep trying different exposures, and you might get a lovely picture of this planetary pairing. And then into March, the two planets will come together, the moon will be out of the way. So if you do get any nice images of Jupiter and Venus coming together, please send them along and we'll try and show them in the next edition of Let's Talk Astronomy. Here's a picture I took some time ago of Venus. Now you're not gonna see any features on the planet, we just see the cloud tops, but you can see a phase. This time it's just over half. Have a look at Venus through your telescope. What phase do you see? And of course with Jupiter, at low power, we can see the four moons. Actually, when I took this picture, only three moons were on view. And then you turn up the power on your telescope using a different eyepiece, and you can see detail on the planet. So then, Ian, eyepieces, what do they do? Well, basically, they say give you the magnification for yeah. the telescope. So, you know, if you want to get closer to an object or if you want to get further away from an object. So different types of eyepieces, different focal lengths will do that for you. So closer or further away or in between. Yeah. yeah. As soon as somebody buys a telescope, they'll probably have two or three different eyepieces. Uh, eye and what they'll notice, of course, is there are different numbers on the eyepieces and the eyepieces are different sizes. That's so right. Could you take us through what the different numbers mean and, and maybe why they are all of a different size. Right, the different numbers on the eyepieces uh, re represents the actual uh, focal length of the eyepiece uh -huh. from the principal plane of the, uh, the glass, yeah. the point of there where the light is, to the actual uh, focal point of the light. Yeah. So that represents the number on the eyepiece. Yeah. So here we've got a 10 millimeter eyepiece. So if we were to put that in a thousand millimeter scope, yeah. focal length scope, which you can find your focal length of your scope, quite easily. That should least. be in the documentation. Yeah. Yeah. Or on the side of the telescope. Ah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you've got a focal length of a thousand. You yeah. just divide that number into the thousand and that will give you the, your magnification. So, so a thousand over ten. One hundred. hundred times magnification. That's Easy correct. as that. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Now, a hundred times magnification, is that high or low power? It's, 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 it's medium sort of power. Okay. It, it all depends on the telescope you're using. Now, somebody just starting using a telescope might think, why do we need all these different focal lengths and so on? Can't I just slam in my highest power, find my object, and I'm seeing it at its best? Not really, no, because you know, when you're working at um, you know, such long focal lengths, you, know, you, and you need to be able to find the object that you're looking at. Exactly. <laughs> so you, know, you always start off with the lowest power, and you work down the power gradually. And I presume the low power eyepiece, like the 40, will give you a wider field of view. Yes. It makes it easier to find the object. That's right, the that's right. Place. So, yeah. I, yeah, always start off with a 40 millimeter. Yeah. Um, it, it all depends on the, on the telescope you're using to what, uh, to what your lowest power eyepiece can be. Yeah. If you're not too sure about what focal length eyepiece to put in your scope to start off with low power ones, then obviously just, just, yeah. just, just give us a call and we can advise on that. Yeah. But typically, 40 millimeter 
would be a good one to start off with. Yeah. Because well, you've um, got a wide field of view. That's right. And then that's when right. you've found your object, you can that's zoom right. into it with a medium power or maybe yeah, even yeah. a high yeah, power. Yeah, yeah, I that. jump to medium power. Yeah. And yeah. then obviously then hit it with the, the high power. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and as you said, the, um, the, the lower the power, the bigger the glass, the better the eye relief. So you, yeah. you're, you're starting off yeah. with a good chance of finding that's your right. object. That's right, that's yeah. right. I mean, yeah. you, you know, the glassware is if you've got astigmatism, yeah. then you're going to have to have a, a long eye relief. Yeah. eyepiece all the way through right even yeah. on the shorter focal lens yeah you know so we, as we get to the 10 the glass starts to get small that's right the eye relief is very small as well yeah. so yeah. there's no way a glassware that's got astigmatism could yeah. could use that so, so they ha you might have, have to stick to a, a medium power uh, no 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 right. no if you just pass it up when you've got it in your hand yep sure right so if we've got a, a short focal length eyepiece uh, you can get long relief, long eye relief eye pieces like this. So basically, it gives you a big piece of glass to look yeah, into. Yeah, yeah. And it's all to do with the element, the design of the elements inside that gives you that wide-angled eye, eye glass to look into. And, and presumably, if you haven't got astigmatism, that that's an easier eye piece to use. It's still an easier, yes. Money, yeah. It is. It's yeah. still an easier eye piece to use, uh, but you have to make sure you get your, the eye at the right distance on sure. the, if you're not using glasses. Yeah. So, you know, uh, nowadays a lot of the manufacturers make eyepieces for glass wearers and non glass wearers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, different, and, and also what, what we need to it on is uh, the foc uh, focal, uh, sorry, the field of view of the eyepieces. Mm. Because he, there's different field of views on eyepieces. Uh, the apparent field of view, you know, you, on this one you've got 82 degrees, on yeah. this one you've got 70 degrees. So that's the actual size of the field of view you'll see when you look yes. through it. Yes. Yeah. In, yeah. on, on a non-given object, if you just put your eye up to it, you'll see you'll see the full circle, yeah. and that's the that's the actual uh, uh, field of view of that eyepiece yeah. that you'll see. Yeah. The true field of view, obviously, you need to work that out. Sure. And that's worked out by you get the magnification of the um, of the eyepiece that you're working on. Yeah. Okay. So if you're working on hundred times. Yeah. Okay. Which is going to uh, give you. Um, and then you're using a 52 degree eyepiece, let's say. Yeah. Okay. And you just divide the 52 into the hundred. Yeah. And that gives you roughly around about a 0 0.5 degree field of view. So you can tell it in degrees. Yeah. Yeah. That, so, I fine. mean, if you're looking at the full moon, let's say, and you want yeah. to, let's say, I just want to get the full moon in, in my yeah. field of view, my telescope. Yeah. Because the moon's about half a degree into yeah. it. Yeah, that's so, right. So you'd know instantly that, yeah. that, that is the eyepiece. I'd use a yeah. 10 mil and I'd just, just get the moon in. Full yeah. view would be a little, little shot that. Yeah. And a lot of this comes with experience anyway, doesn't it? It does. You're it takes a while to get your head yeah. around it. I yeah. mean, a lot, of, a lot of beginners will come to me and say, well, where does the eyepiece yeah. go? <laughs> <laughs> and basically, <laughs> this, is, this bit here is called a diagonal. Yeah. And it comes up for comfortable viewing, basically. Yeah. So, you know, when so you're at an angle like that in a nice guy, you can still right, get to yeah, the eyepiece properly. It, yeah. You can use them straight through. Yeah. At that sort of hang. But then you're crouching down. Yeah, you, uh, you crouch it down. You lose about 0.5% no, no uh, no yeah. light uh, in a diagonal. It's yeah. hardly anything, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, the eyepiece just basically slots in. Yeah. And that's it. And, and, and you focus it by just using your focus. You've got uh, some focus handles, knobs on the actual telescope. And you just turn that until yeah. the actual image comes sharp. Yeah, I mean, I always say to people, yeah, till the stars are pinpoints of light. That's right. You don't want any circles right. or anything there. That's right. That's right. Because some people they say to me, uh, my telescope's not focused. I'm just seeing a, a blob. Yeah. And basically, it's, it's way out of focus point. That's right. You just need to move it. You just need to move it through the right. focal plane and until the, you hit it. The blob gets small. It's a pinpoint. That's right. It's, it's a focus. nice, nice pinpoint of light. So that's that's where the eyepieces go. Yeah. Just a quickie as well, which I want to tell you about about cleaning an eyepiece. Never clean. The underside of an eyepiece, putting a brush up there, anything like that. Why not? Because basically, if you start getting dust on the underside, uh, you know it'll show up in the image. Right. Okay. So basically, you don't want to do that. So you want to keep uh, just blow blow this with a big jumbo blower. Okay. okay. So it blows the dust away, rather. It blows the dust away. Any particles around. in there. So yeah. So never never to go poking your cleaning fluids and stuff yeah. up that end of the eyepiece. Just a blower on that. But yeah. you know, this piece that you're looking to. That will get grease on from your eyelashes. Sure. And, uh, so a bit, uh, some optical cleaning fluid and a cloth yeah. on that should uh, should get rid of the grease. That keeps it yeah, crusty. Uh, yeah, and it's not a problem. But like I say, th th there's various types, and they all they all have a different sort of price range on them. Yeah. You know, this one here, it's uh, an eight element design. It's it's a very very high quality glass inside it, fully yeah. milled coated, blackened edged inside. Right about, like I say, eight elements and, you know, 82 degree field of view. So 
you look into it and it's, 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 it's a massive deal. Yeah. Uh, about £150. Well, thanks very much, Ian. Here we see uh, the February, March night sky and uh, we've got Leo there to the left. You see the sort of backward way around question mark for his head and below the planet Mars. More about that in a later programme. Uh, we've got Gemini with the two bright stars, Castor Pollux, and between them, Cancer the Crab, a very indistinct constellation. So what we've got here are constellation lines just to help shape the constellations. And you see Cancer the Crab seems to have a pincer above and a pincer below and a sort of bar in the middle. We're going to concentrate on Cancer because in there are a beautiful pair of star clusters. Now, first one is called M44, known as the Beehive Cluster. It looks like bees buzzing around a beehive. And this is a perfect cluster for a low-power eyepiece. And then below M44, you can see where it is in Cancer, another open cluster called M67. And this will work really well on a medium-power eyepiece. So here's a picture, not a very good one. Uh, <laughs> stars are all blobby. Uh, but this is Pricepe, M44. That's the beehive, all the bees buzzing around. We need a, a, a slightly higher power, maybe a medium power eyepiece, uh, to pick out the best of M67. This is a much more concentrated cluster. So there you change your eyepiece, start with low, up to medium. Wow, there it is. A lovely open cluster of fairly old stars. But now we're going to something where you would need a high power eyepiece and maybe a filter will help. <laughs> what we're going searching for now is to the right of Price of Pay, it is in fact in the constellation Gemini and this is known as the Eskimo Nebula. And I've marked it there on the picture. If, if you look at uh, Gemini, it's like two matchstick men. Uh, that's their shape in, 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 in the sky. And uh, near to the lower twin, there's a tiny triangle, three stars. Just to the left of that triangle, there's the Eskimo Nebula. So start with your sort of uh, low power, wide angle eyepiece, find a little blizzy, fuzzy blob, and then medium eyepiece. Oh, look, there's the fuzzy blob. And then your high power, and you're looking at a dying star. Uh, this is a picture taken by the Hubble Space Telescope of the Eskimo Nebula. You can see why they call it the Hes Eskimo. We've got uh, gas clouds being blown away from the dying star, and the outer gas cloud looks like the fur in an Eskimo's parka. Look at the centre, and there you see the core of the dying star, which is now a dead white dwarf star. That's a great object to see in the sky. Uh, let's see how you see it through your telescope if you get it onto high power. I hope you enjoy using your telescope. I hope you enjoy changing the eyepieces and seeing things zoom in. If you do get any images of what you see through your telescope, please send them along and we'll use them in the gallery. And if by chance you have any images of an aurora, please send them along for next month's show because then we'll be looking at the northern lights because the sun is very active this year. Aurora may be coming to a sky near you. So that's the end of the show for now. We wish you clear skies to enjoy all that you've seen and using those eyepieces too. Thanks very much for joining us. Goodbye. <laughs>